All right, we're looking at the nearest neighbor algorithm, and the nearest neighbor algorithm is just that. We're going to look at a graph, and I'm going to look at all my options. If I have 10 cities that I'm going to, I'm going to look at the 10 cities, and whichever one's the closest, I'm going to go to. And I'm going to go to that city, and then look at my nine remaining cities, and I'm going to look which one's closest, and go to that one. And I continue this until I get uh, a Hamiltonian circuit. So that's what the nearest neighbor algorithm represents. Right? So let's take a look at an example that will reflect the nearest neighbor algorithm. And we have our original example that we use brute force with. So in this example, we started at Chicago. All right, so I'm looking at Chicago. I, I'm looking at the three routes stemming from Chicago. And I've got Minneapolis at 425, St. Louis at 300, and Cle Cleveland at 349. I look at the closest one, which is St. Louis. Once I'm at St. Louis, then I'm going to consider the two remaining cities. The two remaining city cities are Cleveland, which is 541, or Minneapolis, which is 562. The closest one is Cleveland. And then once I'm at Cleveland, I only have one option. It's, it's going to Minneapolis, so I have to go that. I'm going to return back to Chicago. So my route was Chicago to St. Louis to Cleveland to Minneapolis and back to Chicago. And to find out the total distance we traveled, it was 300 plus uh, 541 plus 774 plus 425. And when I add all of these together, I have my route, rather than doing the brute force and calculating all six. All right, we're going to look at the nearest neighbor algorithm starting with A. And so this will have one solution. Uh, we're, when we start with A, we have to go with the closest vertices. So I consider all of these vertices. I consider the 600, the 650, the 550, and the 700. And I choose the smallest one, which was D, going to D. And so when I'm building this Hamiltonian circuit, I'm going to start by listing my starting vertice, and then I'm going in the direction of D, and that value is 550. So when I calculate my distance, I have all the calculations here, and then I'll have my route, which will be the answer here. So from D, I have to consider 800, 850, or 400. The 400 is going to be the best next route, and that goes to E. So I'm going to write that 400. And then from E, I've got two possibilities, the 950 and the 750. The 750 is the closest, so I'm going to go there. So C and 750. And then I need to go to B, so I have the 500. And then from B, I'm going to complete my Hamiltonian circuit and go back to A. So this is going to be B and then A. And this is 500 and 600. I'm not sure if we can. All right. So now I've got my Hamiltonian circuit. Now to calculate the value, I'm going to add these numbers. So this is 0. 10, the 1, 10, 17, 22, 28. So 2,800 is the uh, value of that circuit. Now if I start at a different vertice, let's start at B. At B, I'm considering the 600, the 500, the 950, and the 850. So the 500 is the best. From there, I consider the 650, 750, or 800. 650, then the 550 is next. Now I only have one option, that's the 400. And then from here I need to complete my Hamiltonian circuit. There's my 950. And so to build the Hamiltonian circuit, I've got B, I went to C, then A, then D, then E, and back to B. And the values, I have 500, 650, 550, 400, and 950. So when I add all these together, I get 0, 15, there's 12, 17, 21, 
3050. All right, so from B, I end up with a, an algorithm answer that gives me 3050 miles, whereas if I started at A, I ended up with 2800. So sorted edges algorithm is the next algorithm, and this is an algorithm that first requires you to do what's in the title, sort the edges. So we're going to take all of the edges and we're going to sort them, and it's generally from least to greatest. And if we're dealing with distances, that makes sense. But if we're dealing with profits, so each edge represents the amount of profit, I'm going to want to go from greatest to least. So you need to consider the uh, the situation before deciding which order you're going to sort them. But for most of our example problems and homework problems, we're going to sort from least to greatest. Then I'm going to start filling in the edges. I'm going to fill in the edges so that I don't have any vertice that has two or more edges coming from it. And then I'm also not going to complete a Hamiltonian circuit until all of the vertices have been touched. Okay, so that those are two important rules when we're doing sorted edges algorithm. So with our first example, again, we've got the Cleveland, Minneapolis, St. Louis, and Chicago. The most time consuming part of this um, algorithm is actually sorting the edges. So I'm going to take the 300, that's the lowest, 349, then 425, then 541, 562, and 774. All right, so then I'm going to build my Hamiltonian circuit. I'm going to start with the lowest edge, or the edge at the top. I'm going to highlight that. Then from there, I'm going to go with the 349, and then the 425. Now, this 425, if I highlight it, I have three routes coming from Chicago, which violates one of my two rules. So I can't use the 425. I'm going to cross that out. The 541, if I highlight this one, I've created a circuit, but I haven't hit Minneapolis, so that violates another rule. So I cannot use the 541. Then I'm going to go with the 562, and then the 774. And this is the only solution with sorted edges. With nearest neighbor, I can ask you to calculate from each starting, each vertice as your starting point. With sorted edges, there will only be one solution, always. And again, and again the most time consuming part is listing all the edges from least to greatest. So with this graph, we have our edges. I have them already sorted over here. We're going to start with the 400. So I am going to highlight this. Now the next piece is going to be the most commonly uh, missed question on the test, if I had to predict. This 500, can I do this? Now, does it violate one of my two uh, conditions? Do, do I have a vertice that has over two edges coming from it? No? Do, did I create a circuit? No. So this does work, and this is disjointed right now, but when we put together this puzzle, it's like putting together the interior of a puzzle and then also the edges and then trying to fit them at the end. It still works. The puzzle will work, uh, but it doesn't look right, quite right yet. But this is not, it hasn't violated our two conditions. So I've got the 500. Now I'm going to go to the 550. Can I do this 550? Yeah, I haven't violated either one of my two conditions. So I've got a valence of 2 now from D. I can't use this 850. I can't use this 800. The 600, can I do that one? Yeah, the 600 I can do. Now I've got them all connected. Now I want to create my Hamiltonian circuit. The 650, that creates a circuit uh, with A, B, and C. So I can't use that one. I can't use the 700, same thing, circuit between A, D, and E. The 750 is the last one I'm going to use. That creates my Hamiltonian circuit, and all of the edges have been touched. All right, so that's going to be the sorted edges algorithm with um, five vertices and our sorted edges. And this created or showed or illustrated a problem here where we have a disjointed graph, and that is fine. And so I want you to remember that when we get to 
the homework and the tests. You don't have to go, if we establish the 400, we don't have to then go from that 400. We can do a piece on the other side of the puzzle. Right? And so this was our final answer.